So in this video, I'm gonna show you the new Colorize filter in the neural filters area that has been crazy updated. I'm gonna show you this rose. It figured out the color by itself. It figured out this was a flamingo. But how about this black and white portrait shot? It did a wonderful job. But it also figured out this landscape shot. And then I put two guys together and it still did what it's supposed to do. But what about this? What about crazy color corrections to make this image look like this one? And I'm gonna show you how right now. Yes! Let's take this black and white image over to the new neural filter. We've had a lot of these since the past year. Ah, but notice I can't colorize it. Why is that? Well, let me X out. If you look over here, do you see how this says gray 8-bit? Essentially, the mode of this image is grayscale. So I need to come up to image, mode, and RGB color. Still going to stay black and white, but now I have three color channels. Now I can go into filter, down to neural filter, and you'll see that my colorize is not grayed out. So if you ever encounter that, just probably your, your image is in grayscale mode. You have to click these to turn them on and then it applies. Now, one of the things that's interesting, it kind of figured out that this was a rose and gave it a pinkish color and it gave the background that's all blurry a nice green color. I mean, it did a really good job using the artificial intelligence called Adobe Sensei and machine learning. But here's the newer feature. If I want to click, like, let's see how this area right here didn't make it very well. If I want to click inside that area, like right there, it's going to open up a color picker and I can choose a really bright red, click OK, and it's going to put red there. And I can just keep doing this. Like if I want it more red on the outside, if I want to see right down here, it's kind of bright. If I want it more red here on this one, on this one, on this one. How about on the inside? How about we do a red on the inside? and everywhere it looks like the color didn't quite get right. So do you see how we're able to custom tweak this as much as we want? This little area right here, I can click. So I get to custom choose. That little center part looks a little black and white. So I'm gonna click again as close as I can get there. So do you see that? How powerful is that? And you also have the ability to rate it. And if you click yes, you're gonna be prompted to give feedback on you know what could they do to make it better or what did you like about it? So it's really a nice interactive area. And once you're done, just click OK. And it will apply those changes on its own layer. See, it went from this to this really quickly. Let me show you another function of this tool. So I'm starting out with this black and white portrait. I'm going to go to Filter, Neuro Filters. I'm going to choose Colorize by turning it on. Notice it put a blue box around the face. It has automatic face recognition software. I'm going to turn it on. Next, I'm going to pull this to this side. And look at that. It did a really good job just straight out of the can and figured out what to do where. So I like that green background. I think I'll put a little bit more green back in here. And remember, you do that by just clicking. It's going to open up the color picker. And I want some kind of a green, but not an intense green. Maybe something like that. Nope, that's too blue. So if that's too blue, let me pull it down to more yellow and lighter. There we go. See, I have that nice green. And now I can keep that color and just put more green wherever I think I want it in the background, maybe up in this corner. Whenever I like what's going on and I'm done, I just click OK. It did really good. But how will it do on this landscape? Let's take a look. Filter, Neuro Filters. It's going to open up. I'm going to toggle it on. I'm going to always leave check the auto color image because it's going to do that work for you. I was like, OK, this actually this looks really interesting, but I don't think that road should be that red. So I'll click inside there and I'll pick more. Actually, I, I want to go more blue, but more of a blue gray. See how that looks. That was perfect. And then this blue area back here, I think, is a little odd. So maybe I'll click there and it applied that gray again, which actually I don't mind, but you can always drag a slider just to tint that a little bit. If I wanted a little more green, notice how it's tinting everything green. So I think that did a really good job straight out of the can for a custom colorized black and white image. Flamingo. Now we all know what color flamingos are. Filter, newer filter. But here's the thing. Adobe Sensei is going to know too because it's looked at 10 million flamingo pictures. Look at that. How great did it do with me giving it zero input? Click OK. But let's see how it does with these two guys. Filter, newer filter, colorize. That is really not bad at all. If I don't like this red in the background, remember I just click in that background. Maybe I want it to be more blue. Click OK once I pick a blue and remember I can click more spots. Maybe I want to click beside the, under the guy's arm here, maybe on this side. 
maybe his face on each side. Now maybe his face is a little wrong. So how about I click his face and then I click on that color icon because I want to pick a different face color. How about that? It's too dark. So lighter, more orange, something like that. Is that more flesh toned? I'm getting there, right? Not quite there. But do you see how quickly I'm getting to where I need to be just with these little tweaks? So for a quick color correction, it's doing really good. Artists always take a tool that was meant to be used one way and they figure out some other creative way to use it. Take a look at this image. Now let's say you're shooting something with like a magenta light on one side and a blue light on one side. You get these great shots, but all of a sudden you wanna take, you like that pose, but you don't want that creative lighting. You just want it to be a normal photograph. Well, watch what it does to this. Your filters, colorize, look at that. It took this really blue tinted, really cool preset look and converted it to just a normal photograph. Now, again, if I don't like this little blue right here, I just click on that little part of the hat. It's going to open up the color picker. If I want some kind of a brown, maybe click OK. And it put brown through there. And maybe I want brown up here too. See how it made her a whole hat brown. And maybe that, do you see that how this is highlighted with a blue ring around it? Maybe I want to go in and say, you know, make that a lighter brown at the top of the hat. Well, that made it more saturated. I don't like that. So we go to the left to desaturate. See how this looks. So do you see how you have control over all these areas? It figures out what it needs to do for you. So this, I think, is a really exciting component, an interesting way to use this tool that it, in a way that it wasn't meant to be used. Hey, if you like this video, it helps. You can help me. Smack it, whack it, and crack a lack it. Take care. I like subscribers. That's awesome. <laughs> Whoa. Yes! <laughs> god. Oh my god, I did. This is Hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.